In this lesson, we're going to briefly be discussing creating curves from curves. So to begin, let's take a quick look at the user interface. Now you'll see on the left-hand side of the screen in the toolbox, you'll note that we have curves listed under the part view. And in this particular example, there are four curves that are created or that have been created as part of the geometry that you see here on the part view. If you click on curve 7, you'll note that the circular shape or the egg-shaped object, which is in this case a closed chained curve in the part area, is highlighted in red. When you click on curve 8, you'll note that curve 8 is a section of the curve that you see on the upper portion of the part view. Not the entire curve, but just a section of it. That is an individual chained entity. Curve 9 is the middle section, and curve 10 is the section on the far right. So again, this particular, or the geometry that you see on the screen, is comprised of four chained curves. In this case here, we have three open curves that, are, that form the upper curve that you see in the, in the uh, top of the screen. And then there is a single closed curve at the bottom that you see here is the egg-shaped curve. So let's begin by joining a curve or sections of a curve into a single entity. So from the Construct menu, the Curve from Curve option, we're going to select Join. And when we do that, we get a dialog box and we're asked to name the curve. In this case here, we're going to keep it as Curve 15. The next thing that we want to do is we want to roll down to the third icon down that you see called Pick Curve or Geometry, and we're going to select that. And then we're going to go ahead and select the individual elements that will form our single curve, or the elements that, we're, that we want to join. So I'm going to go ahead and select the beginning of this curve, or this section, and another dialog box opens, and it says that I have selected Curve 8. And is this the curve that I would like to pick? And I'm going to select OK. And you'll see that that particular curve, Curve 8, is now highlighted and also shows up in the Objects box. Let's select the next section, which will be this particular section, or Curve 9. I'm going to select OK, and you'll note that Curve 8 and 9 are now, are now, now joined. And we're finally going to select the final section, which is Curve 10. And now that you'll see, all three entities are now joined into a single curve, Curve 8, Curve 9, and Curve 10, and this new curve will be Curve number 15. I'm going to hit Apply, and then hit OK, and we're done. Next, let's go over the Curve Start Reverse function. And when we click on Curve Start Reverse, you'll note that a dialog box opens, and it's asking me to select the curve uh, of interest. In this case here, if you recall, the curve that we just joined is Curve 15. And when we do that, you see on the screen that our curve, or in this case here, Curve 15, our joined curve, is now highlighted in red. And you'll see an arrow indicating the direction of the curve. Now, if this were a toolpath, this would be the direction that a cutting tool would follow. Now, the starting point for this curve resides over on the left-hand side at the beginning of the curve, and the end point would be where the arrow is, and again, the direction of cut is indicated, or the direction of travel in this case, for a cutting tool is indicated by the arrowhead. So let's just say for practical, uh, for a practical example here that we'd like to reverse the direction that a cutting tool travels. Instead of traveling from left to right, we want the tool to travel from right to left. So we're simply going to reverse the direction, a fairly simple task. And all we're going to do is make sure that the reverse uh, button is checked. We have the proper curve selected, in this case, curve 15. And what we want to do first is just preview it. And when you click on the preview button, it shows, highlighted in blue, the new uh, direction of, of travel. And this is what we want. So if that's what you want, uh, you're going to hit Apply and then hit OK. Now the new direction of travel for our curve is from right to left. And just to verify that, We'll go Curve from Curve again and select our Curve Start re Reverse and select Curve 15. And now you'll see, highlighted in red, our curve 
goes from or initiates on the right hand side uh, of the line and is finished on the left hand side and, the, and there's the arrow indicating the direction of travel. So now let's go over how we can modify an existing curve. In this case here, let's take a look at the uh, egg-shaped feature in the lower portion of the part. We're going to click on the Construct menu, Curve, From Curve, and we're going to hit our Curve Start Reverse. And if you recall, the egg-shaped feature is Curve number 7. And now you'll see that Curve number 7 is highlighted, and you'll see that the direction of travel is counterclockwise. And for this exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to do two things. We're going to change the direction of travel, and we're also going to change where the start point of this curve uh, is located. So the first thing that we'll need to do is change the direction of travel for this particular curve. And you'll note that the direction of travel is indicated as counterclockwise by the red arrowhead that you see here. And the starting point for this curve is also going to be where the arrowhead is located as well. So what we want to do is change the direction of travel to clockwise. So let's go ahead and do that first. And if we preview that, you'll see that we simply have, uh, we've, we have the reverse button checked. Uh, we hit preview and the direction of travel is indicated as being clockwise. This is good. So we'll go ahead and apply that. But we also want to change where this curve starts from being in the lower left to being in the upper portion of the closed curve. So we're going to select set start point and then we're going to click on the pick new start point icon and when we do that we simply select where we want the curve to begin and I want it to start right up here at the top of the part and then I hit preview and that is what I'm looking for with the new bold arrowhead. We have a clockwise rotation and the starting point for the curve or for this closed curve is in the upper portion of the part. When I'm happy with that I'll select apply and hit OK, and we are finished. And finally, let's look at the Curve Offset function. And to begin, you'll go to the Construct menu, you'll select Curve, from a curve, and select Offset. And when we do that, what we the, initially what we need to do is select the curve of interest. And, this, and let's go ahead and select Curve 15 which is the single entity curve. And you'll note that by default, uh, my curve is already being offset, but we're going to change some of those options. Um, the default option, at least in, in, in my uh, field that I have in, uh, in my dialog box, is 0.250. I'm going to change that to 0.375, 3 eighths of an inch. And instead of being on the bottom, I want my curve to offset on the top. So I'm going to, I'm going to change the direction from left to right. And when I do that, you'll see that the curve has been offset. But I have this funny looking triangle down here. And this is really where uh, the curve is intersecting with itself. And we want to eliminate that. So what we can do is select or check the Eliminate Self Intersections box. And when we do that, you'll see that that self intersection was eliminated. So there and again, now we have a curve that has been offset or an additional curve that's been created offset from the original curve that we have, which is curve 15. And you'll note that the new curve is going to be named curve number 16. And when we're happy with that, we simply hit apply and hit OK. And we are done.